Welcome back to part three of our live training session here with our K24 swapped Civic SI. In this training tutorial, we're gonna take a look at doing our startup tune so we can get the engine to fire up and run and maintain and hold its own idle. We're gonna be looking at things such as fuel and spark timing, as well as our idle control parameters, as well as cranking fuel parameters. Again, we wanna get our engine to actually crank, fire, and run. We have a lot of things to cover here. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session here with our K24 swapped Civic SI. This training module, we're gonna learn how to get our engine to fire up and run using the base map we've created in the last two tutorials. The goal at the end of the tutorial here is to be able to get the engine to crank, fire, and run and maintain in a steady idle so we can move on to the next calibration process, which is our part throttle cruise tuning. We can't have the engine stalling out or having inconsistent cranking or starting, but we wanna make sure we're working through some of these basic details at the very first step in the calibration process. So we need to go and sort everything out here and we're gonna learn how to do that in this tutorial. So we're gonna be working through how to dial our fuel spark, idle control, cranking fuel that might need to be adjusted, and we're also gonna be taking a look at some variable cam parameters to make sure that the variable cam has been properly zeroed out. So it's indexing the correct neutral or zero advanced position within that variable cam control and we'll discuss what that means at that point in time. Let's jump in here and take a look at a few things of where we set into the base map, and then we can move forward into talking about what we need to do before we even get the engine to fire off, and that's gonna be checking our timing with a timing light. So let's quickly go in and visit some of the things we've built into our base file. So the very first thing I wanna take a look at is our volumetric efficiency table. So if we move in here and we go down from our start all the way down here under tuning, we have our fuel table. We've created this volumetric efficiency table using values that are logical and make sense. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna be looking at idle conditions here in this tutorial. We're finding our idle map pressure that we're gonna be pulling here. So we see a map here on the side. And it's gonna be probably with stock cams like this, anywhere between 20 to 40 kPa. So we'll be in this range right here. Our values are anywhere between 40 to 50% volumetric efficiency. These values are logical values. We'll find the, the cylinder filling, the airflow estimation, which comes from the values that we have here. The higher the value, the more airflow estimation we're telling the, uh, the max to calculate from. The lower the volumetric efficiency value, that means we have less airflow and therefore we need less fuel. So this map isn't directly a fuel map, but it influences our fueling calculations in our max. So we'll find that if we have between 40 to 50% VE, that's gonna be an approximate, reasonable volumetric efficiency value we should find at idle conditions for most any engine. Now what we're gonna find here is that when we get the engine to fire off and run, we need to proof this. We need to go in and either update and change our volumetric efficiency values here if we're richer or leaner than the desired target. And then if we're, if we're finding that our values, as we're seeing right here, they're pretty close in terms of what we should have. If we're finding that we're way off in our fueling, we might have to adjust our ejector data. And I'll explain what that means and how to adjust that correctly when we get to that portion of the tutorial getting the engine to fire up and run. So volumetric efficiency table will need to be sorted out here for the idle control tutorial. So we're gonna be looking at this range right here. Somewhere in this range, we're gonna be uh, dialing our V values or again, adjusting our injector data. Specifically, the dead time usually needs to be adjusted uh, to get things right. So we've um, set our table values here. We have a Lambda, 1.0 Lambda target at idle condition. So that's stoichiometric. We're on a, uh, a petrol fuel right now or a slight blend of petrol and ethanol in our fuel system. Whether we're on petrol or ethanol or a blend, we still wanna run at stoich, which is 1.0. So that's what I've put into the idle area here. Really big cams, really big injectors. You may not be able to idle at 1.0 or stoich. You might have to idle a little bit richer, 0 0.95, 0 0.98 depends on the linearity of your injectors that you're using and also how the engine's going to respond and run with a big cam if it wants to run at a leaner uh, target mixture like this. So this is usually what I shoot for for a pretty mild engine. Um, this has stock cams, so it's gonna idle and pull good vacuum. So we're gonna shoot for 1.0 Lambda here. <clears throat> okay, so we have our desired target Lambda here set. We have our reasonable VE values here set. Let's talk about a few additional things. Now we have our lambda correction that we're gonna be utilizing in order to tell us how far things are off by when we get the engine to fire up and run. Now what does that mean? Well, if we take a look down here, we have our lambda value that's coming from our AM X series wideband that's fed into the max ECU that's providing our lambda or air fuel reading. Now, what it's going to do is take a look at what we're placing in here for the desired target lambda, 1.0, comparing it to the actual lambda reading, which is gonna be coming from our wideband, and it's going to figure out the difference 
of what that's going to be, either richer or leaner. The lambda correction, what we find right here, this is going to start to correct our base pulse width, our, our air and fuel model, depending on how far things are off. So if it's off 20%, you'll see this either adding or subtracting 20%. So it's gonna strictly look at our actual lambda compared to the target lambda to figure out how far things are off by and do a percentage adjustment to the injector pulse width, again, that's coming from our air and fuel model. This essentially is telling us how far things are off by and exactly how much we need to update something like our injector dead time or our VE values in our table here. So we're gonna be utilizing the closed loop correction to guide us in making our update changes for this tutorial. Now, a few additional things here. Um, if we jump down in here to idle control, we need to sort out our idle control. Problem. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.